we want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you our live prayer. We're going to turn it over to the shofar and our prayer warriors. This is called Cry Mercy Over America. And now the shofar. God bless you. From the book of Numbers, chapter 10, verse 9. When you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, and you will be remembered before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. as we prepare to engage the enemy. Your word gives us instruction on the rules of spiritual warfare. We heed your instructions lest we become unnecessary casualties of war. In preparation, we declare that our spirit man is clad with the armor of the Lord and the armor of light. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our head and our chest cavity and vital organs. We function and conduct our life's affairs according to your original plan and purposes for us. It protects our reputation. We gird our loins about with truth. It protects our integrity. We put upon our feet the sandals of the gospel of peace. They guide our every step. We put on the helmet of salvation. It renews our mind daily. It protects us from negative thoughts that would derail your purposes and plans for us. We hold up the shield of faith. It thwarts every fiery dart of the enemy. It secures our future and our destiny. According to Judges 7.18, with the word we take up the sword of the Lord, which grants us dominion and authority against the powers of hell. In the name of Yeshua, we shall be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. As we have donned the full armor of God, we stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil, that attempts to overcome our minds with dread, fear, and hopelessness. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places, according to Ephesians 6, 11, and 12. We forbid any retaliation of back, or backlash of the enemy against us, in the name of Yeshua, we blind his vision through the pentagram and deafen his ears to our plans and words. We cover ourselves, our families, our homes, finances, and ministries in the blood of Yeshua, and we ask you to deliver our nation. All means of communication and connectivity are covered in the blood of Jesus, and the enemy can't interfere or obstruct. We cover our phone lines, our electrical grid systems, our electronic devices, and our internet service with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Yeshua, we bind the strong men of witchcraft in Abaddon over America and Israel. We renounce all pride that would open the door for destruction. Proverbs sixteen eighteen. We bind the prince of the power of the air and abolish demonic frequencies. We bind every scrambling spirit that would attempt to twist the words we pray or hear. We tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Luke 10, 19. We nullify the power of any sacrifice made to devils in our cities, regions, or nations in the name of Jesus. We bind and rebuke Moloch and any spirit that has been assigned to abort the destiny of our nation, America. We decree and declare that today is the dawning of a new day. Our season of frustration and failures is over, and we walk in a season of obedience, reformation, and victory. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Let your Holy Spirit and his wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the fear of the Lord, and prophetic insight be upon us today. According to Isaiah 11, 1 and 2, 
And we decree and declare that now is the time to stand for righteousness. Now is the time to possess the land. Lord, in Jesus' name, grant us the ability to hear clearly as you give us insight and the strategy and battle plan of heaven to bring about the victory you desire. Open our ears and let your word inspire us to righteousness and alignment of the movement of your spirit with clear, crisp transmission. Cause our spiritual eyes to function with 2020 vision for the correct insight, understanding, and interpretation of the movement of God in this season. Lord, we don't want to prophesy out of bitterness, emotion, or by the flesh. Holy Spirit of the living God, we ask that you would lead us by your power in the way we shall pray. Shandaramakase. Lamandiyara bakashe ke terararabakase. Ramandiyara bababase ke terararabashi. Ramandiyara bakashe ke terararabase. Lord, we praise you, we worship you today, we lift you up, and we glorify your holy name. For there is no other God but you. Lord, you are worthy, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the one who was and is and is to come, according to Revelation chapter 4. Lord God, according to Psalm 91, we dwell in your secret place. We abide in your shadow, Almighty. We will say of you, Lord, you are our refuge our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Surely you shall deliver us from the snares of the enemy and from the noisome pestilence you shall cover us with your feathers and under your wings we seek refuge. Lord, we are inside of you and you are inside of us according to Psalm 91, Lord. You put your angels in charge concerning us, Lord. So no evil plague will come near us nor shall any, uh, no evil will befall us nor shall any plague come near our tent because we live inside of you today. Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight today, O Lord, according to Psalm 19. For you are our Redeemer, you, O Lord, are our ever-present help in time of trouble. You, O Lord, are the one, according to Psalm 139 and 14, that fearfully and wonderfully made us. You, O Lord God, are the one that gives us our identity. You are the one who knew us before we were in our mother's womb. You are the one who is our creator. You are the potter and we are the clay. Lord God, we call upon you to know exactly what you have called us to do and be. Lord God, that we would uh, do what you have said, that we would live our lives submitted to you, totally submitted in, in obedience unto you, Lord God. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight today, O Lord God. Lord, cleanse us of all of our secret faults and keep us from all presumptuous sin. Lord, according to Psalm 19, Lord, we we choose this day to follow you, for we know it is not a man to direct his own steps. But Lord, you say in your word that a righteous man's steps, they are ordered of God. You uphold us, you sustain us, you preserve us. So Lord God, as I ask you to sanctify our tongues, Lord, according to John 17, 17, It is your word that sanctifies us. We are sanctified by your truth. Lord, let your truth come alive in us, Lord. For it's your truth that sets us free. Lord God, according to John 8 and 32, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. So Lord, I ask you, Lord, that according to the identity that you predestined in us, Lord, that you say, Heavenly Father, According to Ephesians 1, 18 through 21, Lord God, you say in your word that I pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of our heart, that we, our eyes may be enlightened to know what is your hope, what is the hope of your calling, what are the riches of the glory of your inheritance to the saints. Lord, not just us, but each and every member of your body. Lord, we are created in your image. Lord, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to return all of us to you as our first love. We cry out for those within this nation to return to their first love, Lord, as their foundation, as their strength, Lord. God, you are our chief cornerstone. You said in Ephesians 4, 
Lord God, that we are built upon the apostles and the prophets, Lord, as our foundation. Lord, that our nation will return, that we would return to you as our our foundation, your word, and what you speak forth through those that are your voice. According to Psalm 29, those that you've used to be your mouthpiece, that our mouthpiece would line up with the identity that you have predestined and ordained for us to be, Lord God. Lord, we prohibit and we forbid any more confusion in the camp of your covenant believers, Lord God. Lord, we release, we permit, Lord God, for your identity to arise, to shine, to let your light shine through all of us, that it may draw all men unto you, Lord God, according to Isaiah 60. In Jesus' name, Lord, we cry out to you for those that are mouthpieces in this nation, that they would choose this day whom they would serve, according to Joshua 24 and 15. Lord, that they can no longer, you will not tolerate us to sit and try to serve two masters. We must choose. And Lord, so we call forth those, Lord God, like Kamala Harris, Lord, like Joe Biden, who says that he is a believer of you, God, that he would return to his first love, that Kamala Harris would return to her first love, Lord God, that she would hear your voice and that she would choose this day whom she shall serve, and that her mouthpiece would line up with who she represents in the name of Jesus. And likewise, that Joe Biden's mouthpiece would line up with whom he says he serves. Lord, that we will know who is of the enemy's camp and who is not. Lord God, that likewise, each and every one of those that profess to be yours, that say that you are our Lord, our Savior, and our Master, Lord Jesus, that our words would line up with who we say we identify with. Lord God, that this nation that says they are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, would line up with the one they are, we are identifying with, the one true God, that our words would line up and that we would represent you well, Lord God. That there no longer be two, uh, two voices coming out of the same mouthpiece. That we would no longer be double-minded. That it would no longer be about uh, pleasing the ears and tickling them, Lord God. But that our yea would be yea, and our nay would be nay. Lord, we ask you to encamp your warring angels round about us. Deliver us from the snares of the enemy. Lord God, show us within the body of Christ exactly where we have allowed the enemy to take control of our mouths, Lord. And we repent for that, that you would show us and that we would quickly bring it to your cross, Lord. And we would lay it at your feet. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you have extended, Lord. God, that you would restore all those wasted places, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to recognize that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. Lord, that we would guard our mouths, Lord Jesus. Lord, O Tahaya. We thank you, Lord, that the righteous man steps, that they are ordered of the Lord, that you uphold us, you sustain us, and you preserve us. Lord, that we know it is not a man to direct his own steps, according to Jeremiah 10. Lord God, that you would help us to remember that as we open our mouths, that we would glorify you and not grieve you. In Jesus' name, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search, search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. 
you hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lawfully for me to attain. Psalm 139, 1 through 6. Create in me, Lord, clean hands and a pure heart, that I might serve you all of my days. You have captured my heart, O Lord, and your praise will flow from me forever. My heart said, seek his face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Be still, my heart, that I might hear the whisper of my God. May your will be my will, and may you guide me by your righteous right hand. Lord, help us as the intensity within our country has been building up. The radical left is frantic and are trying anything to come against our president to destroy him. The evil one is trying to thwart your plans, but no one can come against your purpose. Psalm 2-4, the one enthroned in heaven laughs, the Lord scoffs at them. Isaiah 46, 10. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Father, let the spirit of wisdom rest on the White House and Capitol. Protect our president and his family from sabotage, lies, conspiracies, terrorist attacks, enemy infiltration, and assassination. Surround the First Lady, Melania Trump, and their children with your mighty angels. Let your word and will be printed on the president's heart. Remove any people surrounding the president that gives him bad advice and comes against your plan. Have mercy and forgive us, Lord, for the abominations being committed in our land. Forgive us for every law that creates strongholds in our midst through perversion and the bloodshed of the innocent. We root out and destroy any of these strongholds that come against your word. Let any of our political leaders engage in idolatry, sexual perversion, and illegal activities be exposed and removed from office. Shine your light into the darkness and let the demons scatter at your presence. Let every agenda that sets itself up to come against the gospel of Jesus Christ be cursed and rooted out. We pray for the raising up of godly leaders who will stand on your word. Daniel 7, 14. We pray that the leaders of this nation will submit their rule to the reign of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord declares that leaders are commanded to rule by the fear of the Lord. 2 Samuel 23, 3. Let our leaders fear you, O Lord. Let our leaders praise you and hear the word of the Lord. Open the doors of our nation to hear the word in your book. We declare and decree repentance and revival over our nation. Let your glory come in. Stir this nation like never before. As I was praying this prayer, I began to weep. As the Lord showed me a vision of our founding fathers kneeling in prayer and interceding for our country. I thought how these brave men fought for liberty and freedom from tyranny from one of the most powerful countries, the British Empire. They believed in the divine providence. How far we have gone against the founding of our country. You, Lord, were the center of founding this country and the making of our constitution. We are crying out for a return to our God and godly precepts. You have blessed our country more than any other nation, but we have failed as the Israelites to follow your precepts and commands. Again, Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us for the abominations done in our country. Help us fight the battle for righteousness. Second Chronicle 14:11. And Asa cried out to the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you, and in your name we go against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. Because you have been our help, therefore in the shadow of your wings we will rejoice. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. 
Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in the street. Seek his face always. Psalm 105, 1 through 4. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Jehovah God, above all, who is, was, and will be, that our praises and worship arise upon angel wings into your holy holy, that your ears are open, open in listening, and your eyes seeing us far beyond our frailty, beyond that which we can think, believe, or even hope for. For your ways and thoughts are beyond our mortal comprehension. We thank you for Holy Spirit, whom you sent to lead and guide us into all truth and quicken your word within us for understanding, knowledge, and our discernment. Lord God, you bless us indeed, for you are working on our behalf and within us, and the blood covering of Jesus Christ is upon us. We have no fear, because if you are for us, there is absolutely none who can be against us. We will not be cursed nor confounded for our righteousness is in you. No weapon that is formed against us, whether it is to hinder, block, or stop, or destroy us, shall prosper. But we will declare and decree that your word is and shall continue to prosper in us to fulfill your will, plan, and purpose in fulfilling our destiny, that your kingdom shall be established on earth and in us, as it is in heaven. Amen, in Jesus' name. Things have to begin from somewhere, as well as all things which must come to an end. Biblically speaking, everything has an absolute beginning. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. He creates by spoken command and names as he creates. Things don't just happen, nor exist by happenstance. Uh, fact or faith or luck or coincidence. There is a purpose. Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And reality is the state of things as they actually exist, not what you imagine or think that it's possible. Sinclair Lewis, an American writer who wrote Main Street, it's a satirical novel about a small town and its American values and traditions and also about their arrogant contentedness living within this small town. To add more credibility to this novel by the name Main Street, Main Street is the most common name of streets, 10,902 to be exact, from coast to coast. The United States and those characters within this novel, I liken unto an, uh, an analogy. In fact, I call it Main Street, USA. We are so content in the midst of our little piece of real estate. What happens outside that area is of no concern to those within. I'm reminded of a song, Welcome to My World, recorded in 2015. The first couple of lyrics go this way. Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Miracles, I guess, still happen now and then. A rather sad commentary with our society. Uh, you actually wouldn't want to be invited to a place that seems deficient of joy and happiness without God's presence. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will overflow in hope of power of the Holy Spirit. That's Romans 15, 13. When watching the news, we see nothing but devastation, destruction, disorder, disruption, and madness. Seems to be going uh, on and on with no let up or re resolution coming forth. Actually, we are continuing to see an increase in violence and instability. What can be done to break this violent cycle of hate, destruction, and senseless killing? Today, we are suffering from the consequences of our wrong choices and error in our thinking. Happy are those whose wrongs are forgiven, Romans 4, 7. People are living in dread and fear. 
trying to protect their families, homes, businesses, as well as how to survive the pandemic that has hit the world and overtaken it. So it's not just an emotion of anticipation of alarm and danger, but it's full-blown intimidation and, t- and terror to their very being. Violent, destructive acts committed by groups like Antifa, BLM, woke, Nazis, etc. It's just in order to torment and intimidate and control the people and the government, federal, state, and locally, to grant their demands and establish their agenda and achieve their political and ideologies such as socialism or whatever else they may attempt to do to satiate their twisted minds and distorted thinking and logic. Is there anyone who will condemn violence? It's difficult to protect this destructive behavior and chaos when political governing authorities refuse to do the right concerning the situation and circumstances. Instead, remove police protection, agreeing with radicals to appease them rather than stop them. So whoever knows what is right to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. James 4, 17. How do you respond when they respond to the riots and looting and mayhem with it? It's just a peaceful protest, as the protesters are advancing in hate, anger, with acts of violence to destroy peace, safety, buildings, statues, yes, even our history. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. 1 Corinthians 13, 6 and 7. Mass shootings in D.C., 20 year injuries plus one death, 15 shot in the front of a funeral in Chicago. And in downtown Chicago, stores are looted and damaged. And a bridge blocked by protesters. Violence is being downplayed <clears throat> even by Nancy Pelosi. I don't much care for statues anyway. And they'll do whatever they want to do. Or Jerry Nadler, the violent protesting, it's just a myth. With attitudes like that in high places, no wonder nothing can be accomplished. To change the laws or passage of beneficial bills to help clean and eradicate messes and hold people accountable for the damage and loss of life. But when is enough enough? He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. Proverbs 16.32. Fortunately, those especially in positions of authority are finally standing up and speaking out, doing something to change the situation, questioning their motives and methodology by confronting the enemy, either by removing or arresting or whatever uh, means is necessary. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Colossians 3.25. Freedom is not guaranteed. We are responsible, each one of us. If we don't pursue peace and prevent the ongoing assault of this nation, we shall surely lose it. To just quote a couple of consoling scriptures, Psalms 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He alone is my refuge and my place of safety. Job 5.11 says, The lowly he sets on high, and those that mourn are lifted up safely. Isaiah 4.10, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Psalm 64.1 says, Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve me from the fear of the enemy. It's not just the enemy and what he can do, but it's the fear of the enemy that is as great or greater than the acts of the enemy that come against me. It's a little bit of 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 you, O Lord God, King of all the universe. There is no other God but you. There's none above you. There's none beside you. There's no none below you. There is just you. You are mighty. You are lovely. You are holy. You are pure. You are beautiful. O kotsita ha tsita ra katsi. Andro koriya katsita haya. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we glorify you. O Lord God. 
my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. Lord God, I cry out to you, O Lord God, that the righteous man's voice, Lord Jesus, that it would be heard among the nations. It would be heard, O Lord, as we cry out to you, O Lord Jesus. O magnify the Lord. O magnify the Lord with me. Come, let us magnify the Lord. Lord, in this season that we're in right now, the enemy is trying to mute us. He is trying to mute our voice that he might be magnified. Lord, that his voice might be louder and louder still. Lord God, but Lord, just like in Joshua chapter 10, Lord, even those that were in the camp of the Israelites, they became silent as they saw your miracles and signs and wonders. As Joshua, who was a man who was very intimate with you, Lord, had an intimate relationship, could say to you, O Lord, in the midst of the battle with the five kings and their armies, Lord God, cause the sun to stand still until we see victory over our enemies. Lord, and you did just that. The sun stood still. And you killed more with hailstones than they did with the, the, the edge of the sword. Lord, likewise, we ask you now, O God, as we draw near unto you. Lord, you said that it's the righteous man who draws near to you, that comes near your dwelling place, that will inherit the land, that will dwell in it forever, Lord God that you would, those that are drawing near to you, Lord, that you would hear their voice today, that you would hear their voice, Lord, like in Psalm 91. Lord, you said that you would hear us. Lord, that you deliver us in times of trouble. Lord, that you would honor us. Lord, in Psalm 37, you said that it was blessed, that we are blessed, Lord, those that are righteous, Lord, that they are gracious and they give, for those blessed by him will inherit the, the land. Lord, you said that the steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. The Lord, when we fall, we shall not be hurled headlong, because the Lord is the one who holds our hand. Lord God, I thank you, Lord. You said, I have been young, and now I am old, and yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. All day long he is gracious and lends, and his descendants are a blessing. Lord, you say, depart from evil and do good, for you will abide forever. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his godly ones. They are preserved forever. Lord, you said that a righteous man's steps, that they are ordered of the Lord, that you uphold us, you sustain us, and you preserve us. Lord, so therefore the unrighteous man's steps, they are not ordered of you. They cannot be preserved nor sustained nor upheld. So Lord, we thank you that we stand in that place with you because of your righteousness, not because of our own. Our righteousness is as filthy rags unto you, Lord. But I call upon the Spirit, the image of God within each and every person, within earshot of this prayer. I call upon you to return to your first love. I call upon you, O oh Lord, unlock their hearts to receive you once again, to remember your voice and no longer follow the voice of a stranger, according to John 10. For the stranger does not care if they live or die. They are just being used. God, wake them up to see. Open their eyes that they might see, O oh Lord, just like you did in John chapter 9, Lord God, with the blind man. Lord, it is not his fault nor the fault of his parents, Lord God, but it's that your glory might be exalted. Your glory might be magnified. Oh, Riyakatsi. So, Lord, we magnify you today. Let your glory rule and reign. Let your signs and wonders come upon this nation, within this nation, O oh Lord. Not just within the third world countries, not just upon those places that we know are dark, that we know, Lord God, oh, Riyakatsi, are being oppressed right now, Lord. But in the midst of us, Lord, take the deafness from the, our ears and the blindness from our eyes. Let us hear what your spirit would have to say to us. Open our eyes and show us, 
Show us from your perspective, Lord. Show us, Lord God, according to Ephesians 1.20. For we are seated in heavenly places with you, Lord, that we see from that perspective, Lord God, that you would open the eyes of your servants, Lord God, that we may see there are more for us than are against us. Lord, that your, your myriads upon myriads of angelic hosts are in our midst. Lord God, you see how the enemy is trying to dismantle the branches of our government, just like he has attempted to dismantle the foundation of this nation with the truths of your word that we are founded upon. Lord God, I ask you, O Lord, please forgive us. We repent, Lord. I know that you love mercy more than you do justice. So God, we cry upon you. We cry mercy, 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 Lord God. Our constitution was founded upon your word. Lord, you are the one who gave them the strategy, the understanding how to frame our constitution. You see how it's under attack. You see how the branches of our government, how the enemy is trying to to gray those boundaries, Lord God. We ask of you, Lord Jesus, to make those boundaries so clear, so distinct to for them to know what is their authority versus what is not. Lord, that that judicial branch, that they would not legislate, but they would interpret the law. Lord, that they would abide and they would make decisions based upon the rule of law. Lord, no more murky waters. We ask you, O Lord, to throw in your, your rod, Lord God, that would take the murky water and make it clear, make it where we can drink upon it, Lord God. Oh, just and righteous God, bring forth justice in this nation the way that you originally founded it to be, O oh God. Let that ring true in the hearts of those that you have allowed to be placed in positions of authority in our judicial branch, that they will decide a matter based upon what you have put in their spirit man, what you have put in them, what you have written upon their DNA, Lord God, that their mouthpiece will represent who you have predestined for them to be. Oh, kahat the haya. And likewise, Lord, those that you have allowed to be the mouthpiece, the representative of we the people, the governing body of this nation, that their words would represent those that are their constituents, but most assuredly that their words would represent the creator of all the universe, the judge of all men, the one who wrote the law. Ho Katsatahaya upon the stone tablets. You, O oh Lord, let us legislate according to your word and according to your will. Lord God, that you would cause those boundaries to be sure, to be righteous, Lord God. No longer will you allow the usurpation of authority, O Katsatarakai. No longer would they try to be the ones who set in order as the executor, Lord God, and likewise the executive branch, that you would be truly the executor. Oh, Katsatahaya, and those that are submissive to the authority, the headship of the executor, the commander in chief, the one who has sworn an oath to protect and defend those who he is the head and the voice and the mouthpiece over. Lord, let his words be righteous and true. Lord God, let your perfect love shape every word that comes forth out of his mouth. Lord God, in that perfect love, it may not be all nice and soft and and pretty, Heavenly Father, but let it be your Holy Spirit that leads every word that comes forth and proceeds out of his mouth. That we might see your hand move on our behalf in this nation. And likewise, that the predestined 
an ordained word of the Lord for this nation that has been stamped upon this nation, that we truly would be the beacon of light, your light, O oh God, your life, according to John 1, to go forth and do mighty exploits for you, to bring many to salvation. O oh, mighty God, let your voice be heard among the peoples in this nation. And I call you back. I call you back, return to your first love. As I was in prayer this week, I asked the Lord, what do you want the church to do? I heard his voice very clearly say, rise up and take the land. I thought of Moses sending out the 12 spies to check out the land of Canaan. The spies came back and told Moses it was a fine country with good ground for growing things. But 10 of the spies said, the people who live there are big and strong. Some are giants and we will be killed there. But two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, put their trust in Jehovah and said to the people, don't be afraid, Jehovah is with us. It will be easy to take the land. But the people didn't listen and made God very angry. He said, none of the people from 20 years of age and over will go into the land. They have seen the miracles that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, but still they didn't trust me. So they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until the last person died. Only Joshua and Caleb were allowed to go into the land of Canaan. We are facing giants in our land today. The majority of Americans are bound to fear for even speaking up about their political views. A poll was taken and most conservatives, 80% said they were afraid to speak up for what they believed for fear of retribution. We bind the spirit of fear and we claim 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God is calling us to unite together as one church and to speak up and fight the giants in our land. We bind the power of the cabal, the radical left, the media, the big tech companies, COVID-19, the drug companies, terrorist groups such as Antifa, Planned Parenthood, abortion, and sexual trafficking. We call them exposed, rooted up, and destroyed in Jesus' name. We will not be afraid for our God is with us as he was with Joshua and Caleb. Greater is he who is within us than he who is in the world. Unite us, empower us with your anointing that we may face the giants with boldness and courage. Isaiah 41.10, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Lord, give us your strategies of prayer to conquer the giants in our land. Pull down any stronghold that comes against your word. For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. You, O Lord, are our shield and buckler, and in you we put our trust. As David, who gave honor to God for helping him slay the giant, so, Lord, we give you the glory as these giants are destroyed. May we take back the land with every prayer and honor you once more in America. Anoint us with your power that we can give glory to your name, the name above all names. For you alone, O Lord, are worthy of honor and praise. We ask this in your precious name. Psalms 127.3 says, Children are the blessing and gift from the Lord. So many awful, evil things have been perpetrated against these children of today. Child trafficking is beyond belief, worldwide. 
but the Lord has promised to fight on our side and to rescue our children from those strong and violent enemies. Isaiah 49, 25. Children were sacrificed in Roman and Egyptian times. It was a rule of the day rather than an exception. Moloch, the ancient Canaanite pagan god of child sacrifice, whether it was through war or by sacrifice, word is forbidden. It is forbidden by the word of God. Leviticus 18.22 says, Neither shall you give any of your offerings to offer to Moloch, nor shall your profane name of your God, for I am the Lord God. As I was reviewing some of this information, uh, the, the gentleman that was writing said, hopefully this is no longer done today, but it is ongoing in third world countries and does so in the United States behind closed doors associated with demonic practice and witchcraft. Epstein is a good example associated with child trafficking in Epstein Island. God only knows what else has transpired in connection with this. The, uh, some examples of um, children being um, abused and killed and sacrificed. The Egyptian pharaoh wanted all the male infants at birth uh, to be killed. He wanted the midwives uh, to, uh, to, when they delivered the mail, to uh, uh, kill them. Well, they disobeyed, and they said their excuse was the Hebrew women delivered even before they attended them. God blessed them for their obedience not to kill. Exodus 1, 15, 21. When this did not work, he wanted uh, all the male babies drowned in the Nile. Exodus 1, 22. Herod ordered all male infants two years and un under in Bethlehem to be killed, who could eventually challenge him by power and position. Moses of Hebrew, Exodus 2 1, was one such baby uh, that was placed in the Nile, but he was saved by Pharaoh's daughter and raised in the Egyptian culture. He became the most important pro uh, prophet in Judaism, leader of the Israelites, lawgiver lawgiver and author of the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. Joseph was 17 when he was sold into slavery by his brother, brothers and taken to Egypt, being sold to Conifer, one of the Pharaoh's officers. He was given a position to oversee Egypt due to correct dream interpretation for the Pharaoh, and he saved the nation from starvation. This has been an ongoing past history event and still present, very present in our society today. Satan's desire is to do away with the younger generation by death through war, drugs, suicide, and abortion. According to Exodus 23, 7, keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not acquit the wicked. Today, the biggest threat in death to the unborn is abortion. 16 million been killed. There are over 600 clinics in the U.S. with the annual uh, revenue of uh, $1.3 billion of Planned Parenthood. Margaret San Sanger uh, uh, was an American birth control advocate, nurse and educator uh, that was born in 1879 and died in 1966. She opened the first birth control clinic in the U.S. in 1918, known as the American Birth League. Her philosophy of birth control itself, she said, is nothing more or less than the facilitation of the process of weeding out the unfit or preventing the birth of defectives or those who would become defective. This is known as eugenics. Hitler adapted this philosophy in his doctrine of the superior white race superiority. The American birth league established organizations that involved into the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, which has received federal funding, federal funding, yes, since 1970. They contribute to research and technology. Many terrible things have been done with aborted fetuses, fetuses uh, and babies from research purposes. There has been 60,000 abortions. 
questions, Roe versus Wade. And that was in 1973 when, the, when it was uh, in, uh, passed. The procedure of abortion up to that time was illegal, but it was still being done. And it is now legal in all 50 states and its territory. Genesis 9, 5, and 6. Verse 6 says, How, Whoever, whoever sheds human blood by human, shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. Proverbs six seventeen says, A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Jeremiah 22, 17. But thine eyes and thine heart are for thy covetous, and to shed innocent blood, and for oppression, and for violence to do it. Mighty, awesome God, as we come before you, humbled and submitted, we stand in the gap, gap for our nation. Second Chronicles 7, 14 through 16. Which our nation is on the very brink of ruin. Having, and because we have removed you from our midst. Family, our homes, church, school. Forgive us, Father God. Hebrews 13, 16 says, Do not go, neglect to do, to do good and to share what you have. For much, for such sacrifices are pleasing to the Lord. I release blessings upon the children. I have faith in God who is going to do for them in the future. Hebrews 11, 20. I will bless the Lord and will not forget his benefit. Your covenant with us is one of life and peace. Malachi 2, 51. I put my trust in God. No man nor flesh. Psalm 56, 4. The word of God is my standard. I have everlasting life because I have heard your word and believe your word, John 5, 24. And I have passed from death to life. Christ lives in me. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. I call upon the name of Jesus, and I am delivered. That you would keep me from all evil. Chronicles 4, 1 Chronicles 4, 10. You will show me the path of life as I walk in love. Ephesians 5, 18. I forgive and judge not. Let men repent and turn from evil. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you respond to our heart's desires and crying out to you. And, Lord, it is in your hands, and in your hands, no one can pluck us out. So, Lord, we just say thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. We love you, and, Lord, even our breath is dependent upon you. So now, Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, Karabashanda the Bahata Sandi Yata Stona Hodo, Eda Hasakata, Shiyata, Shiyata. So, Lord God, we ask of you, O Lord, to send forth your warring angels into our land. Lord, we thank you for your blood that was shed for us at Calvary. Lord God, that it has been applied to our hearts and to our families and to our homes. Lord God, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to cause sin and death to pass over us. Lord, that you would be with each and every household within your body, Lord Jesus, that no harm would come to us, Lord, that we'd be mightily used of you in the latter days, more so than in the former, according to Joel chapter 2. Lord God, we lift to you, Lord, those that are standing in the gap on behalf of the United States of America. Lord, we lift up unto you, Lord, President Donald John Trump today and his family. Lord, that your blood would be applied, that sin and death must pass over. That your angelic hosts, that you send in battalions of angelic hosts, Lord God, as I see them standing, they are standing four, no, five deep. Heavenly Father, round about him, Lord, that no weapon can come near him. No weapon can come near him. The enemy cannot come near his dwelling place nor his household in the mighty name of Jesus. And likewise, Lord, every member of his cabinet 
that is for you, Lord, and not against you. Those that are submissing, submissive to your will, Lord God, that they submit to you, God. They are resisting the devil and he will flee from not only their households, but from this nation as they stand on behalf of each and every one of us within this land and within the lands of this world. Lord God, we stand, Lord, for Attorney General William Barr and his household. Lord, that your angelic hosts are round about them. The blood of Jesus is applied to him. Lord God, that you would give dreams and visions, Lord, to Donald John Trump, to Melania Trump, Lord God, to uh, Attorney General William Barr, Lord, even wake up his daughters and his wife. Lord God, that you would give them dreams and visions, Lord, that there would be a confirmation, Lord, that there would be more than one person to confirm, Lord, yea, there would be three people that would confirm the dreams that you give to them so they know that there is a God in heaven, that they know, that they know, that they know that these dreams and visions that you're giving to them are straight from your throne room, that you would continue to guide them, that you would continue to use them mightily, Lord God, that you would bless them with Ephesians 1, 17, Lord. You would bless them with the gift of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, Lord. That you would be with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Lord, that you would use him mightily, Lord Jesus, to divide the, the tares from the wheat within the State Department, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I hear you saying, clean house, Mike, clean house. I say, clean it up. Do not leave one speck of dust or dirt in the midst of every single building and establishment within this world that represents the United States of America. Clean house, I say, clean house. That the resources of this nation would be used to glorify you, Lord, and no longer to be used to glorify the enemy. Lord, that you would be with John Durham and his household, Heavenly Father, that you would cover him, or that you would capture his heart, that he would hear your voice, Lord God, that he would rightly discern who, what is of you and what is not of you, and he would choose to follow hard after you today, in Jesus' name. Lord God, and finally I say, Lord, may you bless us and keep us. May your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. Lord, lift up your countenance upon us and give us peace. And Lord, finally, Lord God, I pray for peace, the peace of Jerusalem, Lord, according to Psalm 122, Lord Jesus, starting with verse 6, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem that Jerusalem, all of Israel, that you may prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. And for the sake of your brothers and your friends, may peace be with you. Amen and amen.